They just, they just never stopped believing in themselves because if you believe in yourself, it means you have to believe in possibility. And if you believe in possibility, you're gonna have to believe in yourself. And so something really cool happens when you do this that I just discovered recently. Hello and welcome to the Pacific Channel where you learn how to be, do and have whatever you want through the power of the law of attraction, meditation and more. I'm your host, Steve Doherty. In this video, Lewis Howe asked Dr. Joe Dispenza a number of interesting questions. He first asked, what if you become wealthy, but then you lose half of it overnight? Dr. Joe answers by saying that every abundant person has that happen, but their response is minimal. Dr. Joe goes on to say that you may have lost the money, but don't lose the lesson. Lewis doesn't give Dr. Joe a chance to explain the lesson, but I think I can explain the lesson here with a little true story. I remember years ago, there was a law of attraction teacher who said he went to lunch with a very wealthy Chinese businessman. And right before they ordered their food, he asked the businessman how business was going. The answer was something like, oh, it's going awful. We're having problems with our supply chain, uh, different vendors are short on supplies, our profits are down and we're having trouble making payroll. But then the businessman quickly said, but it's okay, things always work out. Then he turned to the waiter and ordered like nothing was wrong at all, right? I probably butchered the story, but what matters is understanding that those who become very abundant know that what is most important, what is more important than having abundance is being abundant. In other words, when you totally believe that you are an abundant person, then you know that you can always create more, even if some of it goes away. It doesn't matter if things come and go because you know that it will come back. Dr. Joe will also explain how it's better to be in the experiment and out on the playing field of life instead of in the bleachers not participating. Lewis then asked Dr. Joe, instead of waiting for your abundance to come to you, what should you do? Dr. Joe then says, if you're waiting, you're not creating. And then you have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? You have to keep your vision alive in your awakened state. And then he explains you need to take time during your day to disconnect from your environment and sit with yourself for a few minutes. And then ask yourself, who do you want to be when you open your eyes? Who do you want to be today? What does greatness look like? What would an abundant person do and how would they act? Let's listen to Dr. Joe explain all of this now. I was always going to ask you next was, let's say you make a million dollars in your business, but then you invest a lot in the stock market or whatever, and then half of it goes away overnight. Who doesn't have that happen? Right. Every abundant person has that happen. Right. And, and, and their response is minimal. So what should be, people be thinking when they lose a lot of money or they lesson, lose something? Don't lose the lesson. Uh, you may lose the money, but don't lose the lesson. Should people feel this emotional attachment to the money no, loss? No, why? Or just why? Say, what, okay. is, what is money? I mean, what is that? It, what people really want. It's like people say to me, oh, I have this great idea for this new business and, and I need money. And I say, you don't need money. You need opportunity. Mm -hmm. You need opportunity. You better tune in to some opportunities, right? So it's the framing of how limited we think that we have to get things through money. It just is not the way it is. Yeah. So the fundamental importance about all of this is I, I really don't care if people want to be abundant. I don't care if they want to heal. I don't care if they want to have a mystical. I don't care what when I travel the world. It doesn't matter to me. I just want them to be in the experiment. The experiment of actually trying it out yes. and seeing kind of if I really change my energy, well, could I actually have an effect that's produced in my life? And if I'm waiting for the event to occur, I'm back to the illusion of separation and lack, mm -hmm. waiting for it to happen, to take it away if I'm truly a creator. So let's say, let's say they're not waiting. What should they do instead of waiting? Keep feeling the feeling in the present moment and trust. 
Look, right. If you're, if you're waiting, you're not creating. I mean, that's just the mm. way it is. So wake up every day. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want your dream? It's so much easier to forget that vision than to remember it, right? So yes. if you're going to remember it, you got to keep it alive in your mind. How do you keep it alive in your mind? You, you disconnect from your environment. You close your eyes. You play music in the background. You get, sit your body down and it's got to pee and it's got to eat and it's got to... Well, you just, <laughs> just sit down for a few minutes yes. like training a dog, like yeah. stay. When I say it's time to get up, we get up. Don't be thinking about what's going to happen in your day. You already know what's going to happen. Don't think what happened yesterday. You already know that. Get in the present moment and say, who do I want to be when I open my eyes? Who do I want to be today? What would greatness look like? How, right. how, would, how would I, how would, one day, one shot, one lifetime, what would an abundant person do? Let me rehearse that with my eyes closed. Let me remind myself who I don't want to be. Let me remind myself of who do I want to be. Let's not get up, Lewis. Until we get into that. Until we are, to where the tennis ball hits the sweet spot. When you go, oh, I'm ready for the day now. Now, game on. Now, if you can maintain that modified state of mind and body the entire day without defaulting by seeing someone or doing something, stay in that state, the experiment still continues. And you're changing your energy. Doesn't happen in two days, you're not that good. Right. That's it. You're not that good. We keep practicing. Keep, yeah. People who show up the, for the 21 weeks in a row, this woman, 21 weeks in a row, the end of 21 weeks, she knew it. Boom. Her whole life changed. Boom. Was the 21 days worth it? Ask her. The experiment, she was just changing the process. People who diagnose with really serious health conditions and they start doing the meditations and they realize, wow, God, my body feels better, my pain feels better, but my values, my scans are still showing the disease exists. All right, did it, does it mean that it doesn't work? No, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means like, what am I doing the other 15 hours of the day? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm in lack, I'm in fear, I'm responding to the same people in the same uh -huh. ways. And you gotta think about this. As long as your response to everything in your life is the same, you're not changing. Right. So change your response to things in your life and you're in the process of change. So then, now I gotta get good with my eyes open. Now I gotta be able to rehearse, oh my God, I fell from grace that moment in my day oh my god I defaulted back mm -hmm. to the old self forgive went back. yourself yeah alright no so it's not it's only forgive yourself like there's a forgiving process like shoot but if you're truly playing the game who cares mm -hmm. right you just go oh god let me brush myself off get back to get it let me get back in my heart here let me get back in that place let me remember let me get back in this energy and let's try it again let's try it again yes and, and let's just keep the experiment going now, does that mean you have to be irresponsible? No, you still have to navigate with ethics and morality. You still have to have personal conviction. You still have to have a vision that's bigger than you and somehow that motivates you because not only you're doing it for selfish reasons, but to contribute to others in some way. Of course, there's going to be recognition and popularity and aggrandizement that goes with it. Money should be the side effect mm -hmm. of all that. The game should be so good of your vision, like that vision of the future, you have to keep alive in your mind. That should be the game. The you ones mean, that can keep that vision of the future in their mind now. Exactly. And, and have yeah. a personality. Even if, you're, even if your reality is falling apart, right. and that's happened to a lot of people. I mean, there are people that come to our work that are living in the back of their car. Right. And now they're, you know, th living very well or, or th sure. bankrupt. And now they're, you know, their companies are thriving, just thriving. Yeah. They just, they just never stopped believing in themselves because if you believe in yourself, it means you have to believe in possibility. And if you believe in possibility, you're gonna have to believe in yourself. And so something really cool happens when you do this that I just discovered recently, just watching people at our week long events, um, you know, cause you gotta go all in, you gotta go all in. And it's seven days and it's a lot and it's super intense and there's times where you don't want to show up because I'm pushing mm -hmm. people across the river of change. There comes a moment where people keep showing up for themselves. They keep showing up for themselves in spite of the weather, in spite of their foot hurting, in spite of their bad dream, in spite of the whatever, their fight with or whoever, they keep showing up. They get really worthy to receive. They, it's no, they feel really worthy, like I am worthy to receive this gift. And the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving, right? So we got to get to that point because so many people who are in lack somehow don't feel worthy, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the abundance then becomes the sign 
that you finally become worthy. And the, for the soul, it's not about the abundance. It's about mastering your worthiness. Mm. And the reflection Man. is the things that you accumulate. What's the what's the the strategy to start believing we're worthy of receiving now? Is there fill your brain with as much knowledge as possible? And and listen, my dad used to say this to me all the time. He'd say, wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Just sit down with me here. If anybody else can do it, you could do it also. Mm. Well, let's just start there. So how did these people do it? Like, let's look at what they did. Right. All right, let's study. Let's, this is a school of greatness. Yeah. Let's study greatness. What, what is greatness? Like an uncompromising will, invincibility, right. lead with their heart, adapt and make changes, let go of the past, give, you, give, give life, live it fully and completely and embrace it and enjoy it. I don't know. Whatever you get to write the script, yeah. and you, you tell the story of your future instead of telling the story of your past. Watch mm, what happens. Watch mm, what my happens. Gosh. What is, so how do we? Should we be speaking to others about our future, or should we be more keeping that to our mind and our bodies, and kind of speaking it to ourselves? What happens when you say, "I'm going to do this," and "I'm going to do this," yeah, and this yeah. is my future? Does it's that a, actually it's hurt a great us? Question. Yeah. So I really don't leak it out. Yeah, I never yeah. leak it out because so if I'm working on you. something, yeah. I hold it. Right? I don't want to, I don't, I, I'll, when, it, when I know it's going to happen, that's when I'll say, hey, you guys, this is, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, right? So it's more to yourself. Right. Listen, you future. know when you know when you're changing? When you stop talking about it. That's when you know you're changing. Because you're out you're of the bleachers and you're on the playing field. Look, look, so many people come to our work, Lewis, and they say, I, I always believed that this was possible. All this information it seems I've seen people heal them. Some people create well. Uh, I, I get it. I just didn't believe it would work for me. Mm. Oh, it's a big moment. It's a it's a big moment. Now now you are on the game. You're in are you in the playing field. You're, yes. you're out of the bleachers. Like like we had people stand on the stage. Someone stand on the stage this weekend in Denver. Just said, my God, I I <laughs> I. I really believe that that um, this would work. I just I just didn't believe I could heal. I didn't believe. I really didn't believe it. I really didn't believe. She was a physician. Is a physician. I really didn't believe I could heal. Now, is it about the healing anymore? It's about overcoming the belief. Mm -hmm. Every day, she's got to make that decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision is causing her body to respond to her mind. And that's the moment she's rewriting the belief. And if, if she doesn't feel like it, don't expect anything to occur in your life. You got to come out of your resting state. You got to, you got to make that choice. What do you, for the, all the people that go to your events, uh, and just in life, one of the biggest challenges people have is the consistency of doing these things. Yes. It's hard to actually go and try it once. No, That's but, but here's thing. the but deal. Here's the deal. Accountable? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Yeah. Let's just say you're in the experiment. Uh -huh. And now that belief is right in your face. I guarantee you that discomfort from that belief being right in your face is going to get you out of bed in the morning mm -hmm. and you're going to face off with it. There's an, there's an innate capacity that we have as human beings to want to overcome our limitations. It's in there, right? So the community that, that we have that does this work, they're not like, oh God, I gotta go create today. <laughs> That's not their game. The magic is so good. They show up because they don't want the magic to end. To go away, yeah. They don't, they, they're not doing it as a have to, to please God, do the right thing, be spiritual. None of that. None, it's not an obligation. It's something that they actually look forward to doing because the experiment in their life is creating all these wonderful opportunities. And, and there's plenty of people in our work that started new businesses that are sure. jam they're Project, jamming. Yeah, yeah. They're jamming. They're jamming. And, and, and they would never be victim to those circumstances, right? They just wouldn't let them, those circumstances define them, right? Yes. What defined them was the vision of the future. And that vision they had to keep alive and the emotion mm. was the energy that drove them right to it. So the whole point to this is that you must change your energy if you're going to attract your abundance. It's quite simple. Just as a sidebar point, Dr. Joe mentions a woman showed up for 21 weeks and then I think he subconsciously corrected himself and said 21 days. But anyway, 
The point is that you must keep on showing up for yourself. You must feel worthy to do that. And that the other 15 hours of your day outside of meditating better be filled with you filling your future instead of your past. Otherwise, nothing is going to change. You must get good at feeling elevated emotions when your eyes are open. And you must keep on trying. And if you fail one day or many days, brush yourself off and keep, going, keep on going. Keep this experiment going. You must keep showing up for yourself. You must feel worthy, not because of your actions, but because you know that you were born worthy and have nothing to prove. When you fully believe that, it's easier to create and manifest. Dr. Joe makes a point that it's not about manifesting your abundance. It's about mastering your worthiness. The material things are just a reflection of who you now know yourself to be. Lewis Howe then asks a very important question. He asks, should we speak to others about our future or should we keep that to ourselves? As you heard, Dr. Joe recommends keeping it to yourself. The reason that's a good idea is that if you tell others about your lofty dreams and goals, more than likely they're going to discourage you. You don't want to put yourself in a place where your vibration is affected by the negative thoughts of others. You don't need input from others, especially if their input is negative. So try to keep it to yourself unless it's toward the end and you either have your manifestation in your hands or you are 100% sure it's coming. The other important point that Dr. Joe makes is that many people who do this work do believe that it is possible to heal and attract abundance, but they don't believe that it's possible for them. But once they do believe that it's possible for them, then it happens. So creating abundance or healing yourself isn't just about creating abundance and healing yourself. It's about overcoming the old negative belief that it wasn't possible. It's about overcoming and becoming, as Dr. Joe said. It's about making new, better choices every day that are in alignment with your goals, dreams, and aspirations. In other words, your elevated emotions and your vision of the future must be greater than your emotions of the past. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, and share it. Share it with someone you know who might be stuck in a rut of their old feelings who keep recreating their current stagnant reality. In a nutshell, the best advice to follow is to choose to feel good no matter what is going on in your life, and the universe will reward you with everything you want. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, have a great day or night. Christmas is coming, and we would love to give back to our Pacific family. We are offering two lucky winners a ticket to Dr. Joe Dispenza's week-long retreat in Cartagena, Columbia Co., worth $2,300 each. To enter the giveaway, you must be a subscriber to our channel Pacific. Like this video, comment your manifestation goals for the year 2023, share this video with any five people, and stay tuned on our channel as we will declare the winner soon. Please refer to the description below for more info. Good luck!